Hi everybody, this is Kimberly Canale and you are Crafting with Kimberly live. This is my very first live video, so I'm hoping I'm doing everything right. <laughs> when this is all finished, um, this will be on the Southeast Steuben County Library site and also on their site on YouTube. They have a channel on YouTube. So if I'm going too quickly, um, you'll be able to go back review the videos, see the comments. If anybody writes comments, I have my daughter Claire helping me because um, I can't see the comments from here. Hi Claire. So she's going to read the comments uh, to me if you have any questions while we're going. I know based on um, you know the COVID-19 and all the horrible things that are going on out there, you know, everybody's wanting to do projects and create and do, a, you know, a couple fun little things with the family or by yourself. So I just had in um, March a class on making a leprechaun gnome. So this was my class and it was extremely popular and it was sold out. Um, so I think gnomes are, are the way to go. So this is a really cute thing. So I thought, all right, if I'm going to create a class, let's do something that everybody has at home. Everybody's got a pair of socks. So what we're going to make is this cute little bunny gnome. Um, for those of you that celebrate Easter, this is perfect. For those of you that just want to celebrate spring, bunnies are here. So this is what we're going to be showing how to make. I'm going to try to do a lot of um, substitutions for things that you may not have. Um, give you a list of what I've used for this, give you the idea how to do this. If you don't like it as a bunny and you want to make just a regular gnome, you'll be having, you won't cut the ears, it'll just be tall. But if you want a, if you want a bunny, you'll have gnomes. I see comments coming through, so I think some people are here, so yay. Um, and as I said, I'm going to go through and, and do different um, substitutions. What I'm using and what you're using, I'll try to get as many as I can. I use socks from the from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to have to keep watching that and leave the comments to me, please. Um, I use socks from the Dollar Tree. You can get a package of uh, two or three pairs of socks. So that's either, um, you know, four or six gnomes that you can make out of a pair of socks. If you have any socks at home, use a pair, use a pair of socks, preferably clean. That would be a good thing. I like using fuzzy socks for the hat. I think it really, really looks cute. If you by chance don't have any fuzzy socks, you can also use just the other sock from your pair of socks. You can use that too, so I'll be showing that. I'm going to use fuzzy, but I'll show how to do um, that as well. For the beard, I love using Dollar Tree mops. Um, they're a dollar. You get a ton of the different fabrics here. In fact, I, I used for the one I'm using here, I put that into three. So I got a lot of material from one mop. If you don't have a mop and you wanna make it as we're going now, you can take an old t-shirt and uh, cut the t-shirt out. If you cut a t-shirt into strips and then pull it tightly, what it will do will make nice long strips. So you'll be able to use that as a beard. Also, if you have any yarn at home, um, when I'm out, I always look for um, some good-looking yarn. This is really cool. This was, uh, it's called Go For Faux, nice and fuzzy. Homespun, that makes great beards. Also, any of the fun fur. Another fun thing to use for beards are um, pillows. This is from the Dollar Tree. So if you were to cut that off, you'd have all this really neat fur. That makes a cute gnome. In our class, we also used, um, we took um, uh, dusters, the Swiffer dusters, cut those apart and used that. I've got to bend down here because I forgot to plug my um, hot glue gun in. That's an important thing. You always want to make sure that your glue gun is plugged in. If you do not have a glue gun, to me, glue guns are the best to use. 
If you do not have a glue gun, I would truly suggest um, sewing it with a needle and a thread. If you were to just try to use um, Elmer's glue, any other craft glue, it just won't dry fast enough. So not to say that you can't get it done, but if you were trying to do it while we're doing this, um, it just wouldn't wouldn't dry in time, but it could be used. But I, I personally like a glue gun. For the nose, I personally love the wooden doll heads. Um, these are a little on the expensive side. Um, they have a flat back. Uh, you get a package of, I think a package of six um, at Michael's for, I think they were like $5.89, something like that. Always use a coupon. Um, but the, the, I like the wooden balls. It's flat on the back for the doll head, but they also have the wooden balls. If you don't have those, you can use a ping pong ball. That works. If you don't have that, the other fabulous trick is using a pair of nylon stockings. Way back when, remember when we used to wear nylons, ladies? Some of us still do. But if you have any of the nylons um, hanging around your house, here's a new use for them. I'm also going to use the tips of the toes to make hands. I'll show how to use hands. Gnomes usually either have hands or don't have hands. I'm going to show how to make it with, but you can use with or without. Um, but stockings are great. They also have those at the Dollar Tree, knee highs, anything like that. And then once you have a pair of stockings, once you've used the tips, you can just keep cutting to use, uh, cut a strip about like this big, stuff it, and we can use that for the nose. So I'll be showing that as we're going. Some people like to do their gnomes on cones. Um, I think that's expensive. These, you know, you can find these at the Dollar Tree every once in a while. Um, I make ribbon trees, so that's why I have a bunch of these. But I, I think that's kind of expensive, but you'll, you would just basically put your sock right over the gnome. I love polyfill. You get a big bag of polyfill, make an awful lot of stuff with this. A little, you know, one bag goes a long way. Again, use your, use your coupons. If you do not have any polyfill at home and you wanna make these right now, if you have any, Plastic garbage bags. I mean, I know these are premium now since they don't have them in the stores. These are going to be antiques. But uh, if you have a bunch of these laying around, you can crumple these up, use these for stuffing. If you have old rags at home, uh, clothing that you're not wearing up, you can tear that apart. Use that for um, the stuffing and, and fill that up. So those are pretty much all of the projects that you're going to do. Any size sock, it really doesn't matter. You could use little tiny ones. It would be a small gnome. You can use the big, long tube socks. Uh, that gives you a lot of space for arms. I'm using like these, the ones that I got that came in a package of um, three pair. They're probably like uh, midway, like calf length. So this is what I am personally going to be using for that. You're going to have to save the things. So hello, Erica, Kaylara, and Nikita. Hi there. Uh, we're going to try to figure out how to figure out comments and things. Um, so what you want to do is you're going to take your sock. What you need to do is you need to decide, do you want arms or do you not want arms? I like arms. I think they're cute because you can put a little something inside to hold it. You could just have the arms flopping down. If you don't glue, I happen to hot glue the egg because I wasn't ever going to change that. But if you just glue his little hands together, then you could poke things in and change them. If you don't want arms, you know, basically this is, is what he would look like and he just sits like that, which is cute too. So either or. I'm going to show how to make the arms though. So because I'm going to make arms, I'm going to take my sock and with my scissors, I'm going to basically cut right on the line where the tube sock starts. So you've got your little cuff and then you've got the sock. I'm going to cut it right there. Um, normally fabric socks, fabric scissors are better used. I didn't bring mine down, so I'm just using regular old 
shears right here. So I'm going to cut these off. If you're making arms, fold that right in half so you have an open end and the folded end. Fold it in half. Put your scissors up through, and we're just gonna cut this in half. By folding it, you know you're actually going right in half and your arms are going to be even. So you just cut that in half. So you have one half, two half. We won't do the hands right now, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just put those aside. If you are choosing not to do the arms, you do not have to cut the top off. Um, that could be used, you could put a rubber band around it, cut that in half and that can be your ears if you didn't want a different color. But it won't look as good, you would have to do some really funky stuff. It's really better to have another um, sock on top because what you want to do, you want to hide the top and you want to cover part of his nose. Um, the more, the bigger the nose, the cuter the gnome, in my opinion, and um, you want another sock to fit over it. I've seen them where they just have that, and what they do is they take their mop and they just go all, basically all the way to the top and then just put a nose in there. Gnomes usually don't have eyes. You can put eyes on if you want, but usually gnomes don't have eyes. So we've taken our arm pieces we're gonna push those aside. So what you have left is your other part of your sock. For the description that I have in the class, I said get something to weigh your gnome down. It's good to kind of put a little bit of something down there. Rocks, go out in the backyard, gather up some rocks. If you're going for a walk, um, pick up some rocks the next time you're walking around. If you have gravel at home, if you've got big rocks, you can use those. I happen to have a whole bunch of like a little pebble type rocks. So you're gonna put those just right in the bottom of your sock. You don't need a lot, because they're usually not that tippy. You just want enough to give it a little bit of a base. So when you have some in there, so you can roll it around, push it around like that, just to make sure that it's on there. So I've got my rocks at my bottom. That will give it stability. Again, you can use the big rocks, you can put one big rock in there. That would work. I'm going to consider the heel. You can see how it juts out, how it goes round like that. I'm gonna use that as the front, the face of my gnome. Because what that does is it sticks out more and it gives you a chance to be able to put your nose and have the, um, the, the beard hang down a little bit better. So we're gonna consider the heel part the front. When you're using polyfill, if you're using polyfill, whenever you use it, the best thing is you wanna take little pieces. Don't just grab this whole bunch and stuff it in. It makes it very lumpy. So whenever you're wanting to stuff something, take a little bit at a time, stuff it on down there. So little bits. The other thing that I really like gnomes is big noses are good and big bodies are good. I associate really well with these gnomes. So we're going to stuff that all the way up. I'm going to kind of look. I'm going to move it around, get it where I want it to sit. I think that's sitting well. I'm going to put just a little bit. I'm going to put just a little bit more. I can't hear you. <laughs> a little bit more like this. All right, there. I think I've got that. I think I've got that good. If at home you're sewing, you would take this, fold it down, fold it down, kind of like you're wrapping a package, fold it over like that, sew that up. If you have any rubber bands, what you can do is take a rubber band and close that up. Whatever you do to the top, it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. It's, it's not going to be shown because we're putting the other sock down on top. So however you're going to do that with a rubber band or sewing, I am going to hot 
glue gun it. So like I said, I folded it in like this, flipped it down. Hopefully my glue is ready. Oh, one thing I wanna show you too, <laughs> before we get to the glue, a chopstick or a pencil. I'm using a chopstick so I don't know where my pencil went. Chopstick or a pencil is a great, great tool to use or even the tips of your scissors, but they get glowy. But if you have a, a chopstick or a pencil, it's a great thing to use. Hot glue is hot. If you are a crafter and you normally use hot glue, you know that we usually don't have, crafters usually don't have fingerprints because we've usually burned them off. Hot glue is extremely hot. If you're doing this um, with children, I would say you do the hot glue, get that part done, let them do a lot of the other stuff. If you're sewing, they can go ahead and sew. The other thing that I think is one of the best things that I've ever purchased in my life, there are these um, silica finger prints. I, I bought these at Michael's. I, I know they have them at Joann's too, but they protect your fingers. You can actually hold and push down on the hot glue. It will not burn through and it peels right off. It's a great thing. Also, if you can see right here, I have my workspace covered. I have just, this is just a piece of wax paper. It's always good to do on that because uh, glue will just be able to peel right off and it protects your surface. I have also a silica mat that is made specifically just for hot glue guns. They're great because then it just peels off. What I, what I also do is I kind of keep the little nubs. I'm a crafter, so I keep everything. I keep the little glue nubs that glue onto here. They're great if you're using, um, doing a collage, paper collage project. They're really cool to glue on and either paint over or put uh, paper over. Pretty cool. So back to this, we're going to push that in, fold it down. I'm kind of holding it there. Getting my hot glue, kind of just running, running a line. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Because I have my fingertips, I can fold that over and push it down and hold it. If you didn't have the fingertips, what you would do is kind of pull it up with your chopstick, hold it down. You really need just the first little covering just get it to, to catch. Then you can go back, put some more glue in, pull it, push back over. Again, if you have the chopstick, you wanna just hold it down while it's gluing. If you've rubber banded it, that's already done. You're, wait, you're waiting on me for the next step. But I'm gonna get this really glued down. You just want to make sure that's not going to pop open. That's why I like the hot glue. This is already done. This is ready. It's ready to go. So that's why I like to use hot glue. If you've sewn it, you've just sewn it together. If you've rubber banded it, you've rubber banded it together. So now you have your, your gnome ready to go. Your next step is you're going to attach the beard. You don't put the nose. The nose is, is one of the last things that you're going to do. You're going to attach your beard. Like I said, I'm going to show using the mop. I just, I just really like the way the mop looks. Another, thank you, another one I did, this is another gnome that I made. This has the yarn and it flips over really well which is cute so this gnome I didn't even because he's in the bathtub a little metal thing I got from the Dollar Tree I didn't even finish him I just went out I just went from the bottom up I didn't even have to rubber band him because I knew I wasn't going to take him out this shows also how cute the nose is the to me the nose really makes the gnome <laughs> so this is a nice big one and that's just a washcloth I used and wrapped it around so that, <laughs> so that looks like that, so the yarn. What you want to do is you want to kind of measure where you want it to go. You have to have at least about that much space, probably about a half an inch from the top to be able to have your nose 
and have your sock that's going to go over. You've got to give it something to hold on to. So you're kind of thinking about here. So what you would do is what, whatever piece of yarn or the mop, you would take it and you would measure. And I would say, okay, I want it to hit the bottom and I want it to go like that. Well, the nice thing with the Dollar Tree mops, I found the length of their strings. I could do this in thirds. So I just kind of equaled it out here. As you can see, I'm putting it here, bringing it around, bringing it back down. That kind of gives me an even number, and then I have thirds. So then what I could do is it's like a U, and then a bottom here. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it. So that will give me a U piece and a straight piece. So with that, we're gonna still have to give the gnome a haircut at the end. But with that, you're gonna be able to glue that on and glue them together. I like going the two pieces together of the mop. It makes it a little thicker at once. So if you had yarn, you would be going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down with each thing. I have a bunch that I had cut off before. So that looks like that. I have my husband who's running around. I don't know what he's doing, but he's being a dingleberry and running around like crazy and being very distracting, but that's what husbands do. Just trying to put you in the middle. Love them. I know I'm not in the middle. I know I'm a little, I'm a little twisty. <laughs> if you want to walk up here, say hi to everybody and then fix it, you can do that. So these, that's Joe. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Thank you to him for helping me get my setup. I have my iPad attached to a picture frame holder, which is glued and, and rubber banded on top of a plant stand. We really jury rigged this whole thing just to get it to go. So thank you to him. Couldn't do this without him. Takes a village. When you have, <laughs> when you have your mop, the Dollar Tree mop, has the a top that looks like this when you turn it upside down it has a little black line when you when you separate your mop this way you just pull that that black part off and then you have all your strings of your yarn so what you're gonna do is whatever you're using now for your if, you're, if you were able to get a mop great if you're using yarn either way what you need to do is get your get your same length if you, you are, if you are using yarn and this is the length that you want, then just keep going and making a whole bunch or the, the t-shirt cut up. And if you're, cut, if you're using a t-shirt, cut your strips and then pull it. By pulling it, it makes it kind of curl around itself and, and makes it almost kind of look like this. So you want to get all, you want to do all of that. I'm going to do it as I go. So um, you might be too. I have folded this. I don't want to do a lot of cutting. I don't want to do a lot of trimming. And I don't mind that it's going to go up to the top because if I if I put it here where I really want it and I just have to cut that tiny little bit, the only thing that I'd be able to use with that is use it as stuffing. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those even, put it down to the bottom, and I'm looking, I'm kind of coming way up here. So what I'm going to do is for my line of glue, put a line of glue. I'm using the one that looks like a U, so I'm folding that in half. And I'm gluing that down, as you can see. Holding it down. I've still got a lot of glue on that side, so I'm going to take my other piece that's doubled and put that right there too. The nice thing is you don't have to be all that careful because as I said, if it's, if it's a little wonky on the bottom, you're gonna wanna give that a haircut anyway, so it's all right. So we're just gonna continue to put strings on here of whatever you have. I've got a whole bunch of these left, so I'm gonna do the single ones. And you just keep putting your line. If you were, to, if you were sewing this, um, you may want to take a little piece of fabric 
because I've never I've never sewn one I've always used my hot glue you may want to take a little piece of a fabric strip lay all your your mop or your yarn on it and then sew on the fabric and then you could just glue the strip on I think that would be the easy way to do it so Claire my assistant do I have any comments because it's a little boring just watching me hot glue like this well Rebecca Towner is saying it's very cute and Joe thanks Dad. hi Rebecca hope you guys are hanging in there hope everybody's hanging in there with this COVID this is scary um it's not the normal stuff I don't ever remember anything happening like this in my lifetime um stay home please stay home stay home if you go out wear a mask if you don't feel good stay home wait to do this project but let's be considerate of everybody else but let's make stuff too making stuff is fun making to me i love crafting um joe as you saw hates my crafting because my house is a complete and utter mess because as a crafter, you don't throw anything out, or at least I don't. <laughs> you name it, I've kept it, and I find a use for it. And I think many, many others of you out there do the same thing. There's always something to make. But this is just a really fun project. You can see the top of this. It doesn't look all that perfect because I don't care. This whole top is going to be hidden. You want to glue these pretty close together. You can do a double layer if you really want a thick beard. You can do um, a double layer as well. I like to get them very close together. Here's I need some more of this so as I'm going to say I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to go this way. And by doing that I can arrange it so it gives me pretty much the, the, the right size. And again, you don't have to be perfect with it. Um, I don't know if any men are watching. If you've got beards, I'm sure your beards aren't exactly perfect. So why should a gnome have a perfect beard? I am. Oh, some people go all the way around. If you go all the way around with your hair, that kind of reminds me of um, Cousin It from the Adams Family. So you can do that. I don't. That's why if you use a colored sock uh, with a pattern on the bottom too, then it's really cute from the back. But I don't mind him being just plain. Um, oop, why don't you hold him up? Um, but if you want to go all the way around with your hair, you can do that too, because that's a really fun look. When we did the class in March at the library, it was just absolutely fantastic to see everybody's gnomes. Everybody did something different. We gave the basic instructions of how to do it, and it was really cool how people turned it into their own. Um, shout out to Nikita. She was at my class. Um, Patricia, I don't know if you're watching, you were at the class. Joanne, you were there too. Don't know if you're going to tune in and watch, but you made absolutely fabulous gnomes. They look great. This is what my kind of top looks like. And this is so far what that looks like. Now, if you really want a thick beard, what you could do is you could also start doing a double layer to go around. You, you definitely want to get your beard finished. Don't do it and then go back and try to add it because once you glue your nose on, it makes it, makes it look a little funny. So I think I may go, just to give it a little bit more, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here on top of these and I'm gonna put a few more because I really want my front, really want my front to look good and be pretty thick. And I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go all the way around because I really don't think it needs that. I think maybe I'll just do a little bit of a, of a double layer on the front. 
And again, it's up to you of what, how it, however it's looking for you. All right. That I think looks pretty good. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that. You're not really seeing the sock behind you too much. The nice thing about the white sock and the gray beard is you re if it does show a little bit, it doesn't show that much. If you were to use a black sock with a black sock body, you know, you may not like that showing through. I don't mind that it shows through. So it's, it's your preference. You could do a whole nother double layer if you wanted. I am not going to do the back. So you can see I only went just a little bit sideways to the back so I think I am good with my gnome beard and you can see how quickly that goes let's jump I'm going to show how to do the arms if you want to do a set of arms what you want to do if you cut the cuffs off I think this makes a perfect it looks like the cuff of a sweater already so I'm using this end you want to work with the outside, what you want, the sleeve side. You want the outside facing up. Because what we're going to do, I fold mine in a bit. I take it, we're basically going to fold it over on itself. And this is definitely where the chopstick or a silicone finger really works. Um, don't try to use a rubber glove. If somebody's like, oh, well, that's rubber, that will work. No, you'll burn right through the rub rubber glove and it'll hurt. Get yourself a chopstick or a pencil. So what I'm doing is I'm folding that over. I'm going to start it again. I'm going to put a little bit of my glue here. I'm going to take this. This is a little fidgety. Take it fold it up and over. I'm just doing just a little bit of a fold, not a lot. So you can see I've just folded it just a little bit there. So now that gives me a place where I don't have to worry about holding it the whole time. So now I'm going to do a thin line of glue all the way down this edge. So we're basically making a tube. So we're going to glue that on down. I'm going to use my chopstick to fold it over. So you can see where that really chopstick or a pencil will really come in handy. That folds over well. I'm going to continue working little pieces, working little bits as you work. Don't try don't put don't put your, you know, glue in a big long line and then do it. If you were using Elmer's glue, you could do that, but you'd have to glue it, set it aside, you know, wait an hour or so for it to dry. I got to say that your tips are very educational and Connie asked if you sell these. Um, thank you, Rebecca. I'm trying to be educational. I'm hoping this is going to work so lots of people can make these. And Connie, yes, I do sell them. I don't have um, a real website. Um, I'm working on that, uh, but I do go to craft shows every once in a while. I will be looking at all of the comments um, once this gets to the library page, um, I will go back there and check comments. So if anybody asks a question and I didn't answer it, I'll be able to do that so I can put some information. Um, I also make these custom because, like I said, as you can see, you can do almost anything with them. Um, so if anybody's looking for um, a customizable one, depending on, depending on how detailed they are, um, I sell them for uh, $20 if they really have a lot of stuff with it, like if I have to make something specific with polymer clay um, or have a lot of things being held, then I go up to about 25, but um, yes I do, so thank you. One of these days I'll, I'll be really real and, and have a website and an Etsy page. And Right now, um, shout out to um, Erica Unterman at the South, Southeast Steuben County Library. She has allowed me to have this class. We're doing a year-long set of classes called Crafting with Kimberly. 
um, free classes. So thank you. Please use your libraries, support your libraries, donate to your libraries. They offer wonderful classes. So when we do this for the library, all of these supplies would be given to you for free. It's a free class. So um, please check out their website. Once we are back into the normal, you know, set of the world, um, you'll be able to see what kinds of classes are coming up. But I have a whole year's length of uh, classes that we're going to be able to do. So now you can see I have two little tubes. And what we're going to do is just turn them inside out. And you can see how quickly this, this glue, when you're using hot glue, if this, again, if this were with the Elmer's glue, I wouldn't be able to pick this up and do this to it yet. So just, if you're using Elmer's glue, just set it aside. You know, if you're sewing it, then you're good to go. Once you have that, you're going to turn it back out like that. Because we were gluing on the back side, we're now flipping it back so you're back to your front. Ooh, the magic. The magic of inside out. But I love using the cuff of these tube sops because to me, that just looks like a perfect little sweater cuff. He's got it folded over. If you were using a really long tube sock and it didn't have the nice big cuff like this, if it was just kind of like that tube sock material all the way up, with your, bend down here, with your fabric, if it didn't have, if it didn't have this part, it just had all tube sock fabric, that's okay, you still want to go on the outside, to put the, put the front facing down, and then glue, and then flip it around, um, because that, that would work too, because if you open up the sock, you can see it's all fuzzy, and it has all these really weird lines, so you wouldn't want to use that but the outside is okay. So if, even if it, you're not using the cuff, you, you could fold it up and glue it and make your own cuff. Now this is the fiddly part. This is kind of the hard part. I'm gonna show it two different ways. The best way and the easiest way is when you first have your pair of stockings and you can use knee highs as well. When you have the toe, the nice thing about this it's already kind of rounded out. It has the seam and, you know, kind of two sides already done. So a toe is great. You want to take probably two inches. I'd say about that much, about two inches. And you're going to cut that off. So go down about two inches. If you go longer, it's better to go longer than shorter. Whenever we cut, always go on the larger side because you can trim it down. You can't really put it back. So I don't need this anymore. So you can see from one toe, I can get uh, two pairs of hands. So now we have this. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the cuffs. We're going to fold it in half and cut it in half. doesn't really matter if it's not exactly even, but we're going to cut that right in half. By folding it in half, now you have, this is already glued together, this is all one piece, and you have one, an open end here and an open end at the bottom. Same thing on this side. This is why the hands are great to be able to do it this way, because it makes a perfect hand shape. What you want to do, the same thing. With a stocking that has the toe, you can see if I turn it the right way, you can see, I don't know if you can see how clearly that is, but you can see it's a nice smooth area. If I have it inside out like I had it, you can see more of a ridge. I like more of the smooth part to be part of the hand. So you want to keep that turned inside out again. And we're going to do the same thing like we did for the cuff. This one you can kind of do all at once. You're going to lay a line of glue, have your chopstick ready, and just close up that end. Roll it down. You can see I just kind of push it. I'm going to use, I have my finger, so I'm going to use that. Turn it over. 
again, using wax paper. If I were to glue right on, this is just a plastic, one of those cheapy plastic tablecloths. If I were to glue right to this, it may stick, and as I tried to pull it off, it could tear the plastic. That's why working on uh, wax paper, if you're using hot glue on it, it won't stick to it. So now you can see I have a tube. And we're going to take that, we're going to turn that right side again, turn it inside out. So we're back to a tube. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that it's inside out, which it is. I think the hands are really cute. I think it really gives it character. Again, you don't have to do hands, but I want to be able to show everything here. I'm just kind of holding that down, making sure that's there. And the nice thing is if you cut it a little longer, you've got more to play with, more to hold. Oh, that wasn't quite dry. That was a bit too fast. Turn that inside out. So now we have two little hands. I kind of look at those and say those are like fingers, and then this is the body of the hand, so they're hands like this. If you have um, your polyfill, you want to take a little bit of that now and stuff it if you're using rags or even um, the plastic bags. Whatever you're using, cut a little bit off. Stuff it in there. Might need to, you know, finagle it just a little bit. I'm gonna put just a little bit, of, I don't have to fill my whole tube because I'm gonna be pushing that into the cuff but I just want I just want a good size hand. I don't want it to be too big and fat and round. I'm just having it that way. And we're going to I can take that off. We're going to stuff how a, we're going to stuff this in. And the good thing is we're almost done, which is nice. I know the class said 4 to 6 we definitely do, are not going to be here from four to six. It doesn't take that long uh, to do it. So then we kind of have, I'm going to make that even. I put a little bit too much in there. Not that it really matters. But now that we know you have them pretty even. Use the cuff part of it. And... There's two ways there's two ways you can you can do this. The way that I did it the first time is I stuffed this then I glued it. You can put the hand in first and then stuff it. Um I haven't done it that way before, so let me just see if I want to show you how to do it that way. Yeah, no. I want to do it I want to do it this way. Put your seam of your cuff in the middle right there in the middle so if you can see my my cuff where I've glued it is right in the middle you're going to take your glue gun I've got little fuzzies flying all over <laughs> you can take your glue gun and you're going to glue that edge closed doesn't matter what it looks like you're just gonna glue the flat edge closed so you can see when you're using really cheap socks, you've got, you've got just all these little pieces that fly all over the place. So glue that end, glue that end closed, put this in the middle, and we're gonna glue this end. We don't want to have stuffing up close to this part because this is the part that you're going to be gluing up here. So if it's laying flat, it's not going to make the hat stick out because we, we, we will be gluing way up at the top. So you want to keep part of that flat. I'm going to take some of my polyfill and stuff that in there. And again, this is another good reason to have a chopstick or a pencil. You can help push it in. You don't have to be really gentle with these things. See how I'm leaving, probably gonna leave that much flat. 
fill this all in. You make the arms as big as you want. If you want a very muscular, muscular, strong gnome, if that's the gnome of your dreams, fill them up. But you just get it so it's, it's looking squishy. You want to get them even. Cotton balls are also good if you um, have cotton balls around the house. I'm trying to think of all the substitutions I can tell you because I really don't want you going out shopping. <laughs> I'm trying to think of things you have around the house. Stuff that in there. Sometimes it's fiddly. Pull it apart. Stuff it in. Push it all the way down. Pull your cuff part back out. A little bit more just to even it out. Again, if you don't want to use arms, you don't have to, but I think it's really cute. So now you have flat, flat, and then stuffed. You're going to take your hands. I personally like, because when you, when you hold your hand down, your point goes here. So I like my hand to look that way. You could have your hand going up, and that could be its thumb, if you want to do that. Or have it hang. You decide how you want it. If you want, if you want thumbs up, this little point, make it, make it stay up. I think I'll do that. I haven't done that yet, so we'll do a thumbs up. You're going to take your, your glue, go around the inside. Again, very important to use your chopstick. Just push that in there. This is a little fussy. You're going to have to just kind of push, move it in. This The chopstick does have a tendency to kind of glue to itself, so... You just got to keep pushing in. You just really want this one side to look good. If, if your inside um, doesn't look as good, it doesn't matter. That's what you're gluing to your body. So you just really want the outside part to look good. There, I think, I think he's fine. I'm doing a thumbs up. We're going to do the same thing to this. Now, this, I'll use this guy. This will go this way, this is my inside. So then I need to take this, face that down so I know, okay, this is up, this is what I want up, that has to go in this way. So again, if you even wanna just glue one side, stuff it in, if you wanna go in further, that gives you the ability to stuff it in without gluing too much. I'm just gonna hold it, wiggle that out. Stuff it down, down and in. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more glue. Now on this side, again, if you've got your chopstick or pencil, push it all the way around. All right, so now we have Two arms. You want to glue, you're not going, you're not going to look at the body as normal. Normally, you know, if you're kind of looking at this, you would think, oh, my arms have to go down here. Arms aren't going to go down there because really we're going to be gluing our nose here. So our arms are really going to come up here. So because this is nice and long, take your hand and say, all right, where, where do I want that to be? I want that to be about there. So I'm literally going to glue it up like this. So it doesn't matter how much you have on top. So I'm laying down my layer of glue, pulling up, and then just kind of hold it there for a little bit. If you're sewing, sew that in. All right, so now we have one little floppy hand. We're going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to keep my hand there. So I'm like, all right, I know I want his hand there. 
let's be even. Let's do a hand there. So I know I've got to come up to here. Because depending on how you stuffed, how much you stuffed the top, the body of your gnome, if you place your hands, arms together, that way you're going to really know that you've got it in the right spot as opposed to just trying to measure from here. So now, he's a big beefy. He'll be able to go like that. So there's that. Now it's time for the nose. You want to put the nose not all the way to the top. You want to go a little bit that way. Because as I said, we're going to be coming down and over. And we do need to come down and over to be able to hide this part of the hands and the arms. You want it over. So first, I'm going to get my nose on there. If you did not have the ball, you did not have the ping pong ball, you wanted to use a stocking. I'll use part of what I already had from another one. What you could do, take a piece of your stocking. Uh, I'm going to go about this big. This is where you can really get the cute big sizes of noses as well. Cut Cut a piece off like that. You will want to glue one side down. Just put a little glue. Just glue it like we did before. You're just kind of wanting to do that. Glue that. You would take whatever you're going to stuff it with. Stick it in there. It's probably going to be too big. Oh, sing, I was wrong caught myself what you're going to want to do well I, no it doesn't matter I'm going to take that back I was going to say you need to turn it inside out but we're going to glue this to the back so it doesn't matter so no you don't need that stuff you don't need to turn it inside out like we did the cuffs for the hands and the cuffs so what you're going to do you're going to stuff that then come to your other side once you have it about as big as you want Glue that down. So you basically just stuffed a tube. And then what you're going to be able to do, I've got like, this is, um, probably feels kind of cheap. Sometimes it has like these weird strings in it. I don't worry about it too much. I'm looking at it. I see like a really big string there, so I don't want that to be my front. So I'm just going to turn that off to the side. So with your little pillow, your little tube, if you just pull the ends in towards the back, that way you can get a ball, or what's really cute is if you go just a really weird misshapen nose, long potato head going this way, you would just, you would glue that down. So I would just pull that up, holding that down, Letting it dry, going to the other side, pulling that up, holding that down. This is really cute if you can make them this shape. And I had a person who took the class and she had me make her a nose that was about this big. It was hilarious. It was really cute. So to me, the nose makes the character. You can use little noses too, but I just, I really do think a big nose gnome is really cute. So you can see I'm just kind of folding everything in and on itself. You're watching for comments, right? Nothing? Yeah. Thank you. It's good to have a helper when you do these things. <laughs> Sometimes if you don't hold it long enough, that's going to unglue itself. So I've just got to add a little bit more glue. Put that back down. Again, if you're using the chopstick. You would just hold it down with the chopstick. And then you've got just a really, oh, that kind of looks cute like that. That would be kind of a point you wouldn't see that. You probably wouldn't see that part, though. And even if it's not perfect, you would be gluing it here, and you've got more of an ability to really fold that over 
like that. So you can see how just using the other part of the stocking works good. If you just wanted to use part of your sock, if you didn't have any stockings at home and you wanted to just use um, part of your sock, you could use the cotton of that. You could put a cotton ball there. You could put a silk flower there. You know, whatever you wanted for your nose um, would work. I'm gonna use, I have the wooden ball, so I'm gonna use the wooden ball, I like it. I just wanna put a lot of glue on the back of that. I'm going to glue it about to the top right like that. Push them down, hold them in, pushing, pushing. You want to hold this a little bit longer. You really want to make sure that that stays tight, glues on there, and he's on. So there's, there's our nose. I am going to use the fuzzy socks. I like the fuzzy socks. Um, I don't want to use that same one. I'm going to use this one. With a shorter, smaller sock, this really looks good. This is kind of a good size to use. If you have a really long sock that you want to use, kind of cut it to, so it gets to be about this size. This was actually perfect. Because what I'm going to do with the bottom is I'm going to let that be a cuff. I'm going to cuff that up and it'll be like the brim of a hat. You lay your socks down, open it up, so the round part, that's gonna be like right in the middle, but I am gonna put that to the, that'll be to the back. Right now we're gonna cut bunny ears. If you wanted to just make this as a gnome and not make ears, don't cut. We will just stuff it and it would have a cute little point. If you didn't stuff the top of it, it could lay over like that. You could keep it up top. You could put a pom-pom or a flower on top. So if you are not going to stuff it, I'll show, I'll show this first. There's my nose. I think I put his nose over a little bit crooked because I'm doing this upside down and backwards. But you can see we're just gonna go over like that, flip them over. Pull it down, stuff it up. So if I did not, and you want to have like a little bit of a cuff, we'll glue that so it won't flip up. So I would have stuffed the top part of this before I put it on. But that's how he, this is how he would look if I, if I don't want a bunny, if I want just a regular gnome. The, the top makes the point of a gnome's hat. If you didn't want to stuff it, you just want him to have a droopy hat. It can be like that. You can do whatever you want. You can just wrap fabric around and up. So if you didn't have a sock, that would work. But I want to make this into bunny ears, so I'm going to pop that back off. Cut the sock in half. This is your back. I would cut from the hump here, I would leave probably about quarter of an inch to the back, so don't cut all the way down. We're folding that in half. We're cutting the sock. Again, fabric scissors are wonderful. Much easier to use, but I didn't grab those. So we're just gonna pull those down like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop about there. This is about how long I want my ears to be. If you want them longer, you can go down further. Again, turn this inside out. You're always going from, the, whenever you're gluing, you're going kind of from the inside out. I'm opening that up. I'm just gonna take my glue, do a line. I know I'm kind of going backwards, but I have to see it this way. Folding it down. And we're just gluing, we're gluing the ears down. Follow along the line. You'll be able to see there's like a little bit of a U. Put some glue on there. Meet your sock back to it. If you're sewing, sew all the way down. Sewing the ears. Again, I'll try to do it this way. Put a line of glue all the way to the top. We're folding it over, pushing it down. 
you want to make sure that you've glued the tip because we're going to be stuffing this so you don't want to have a hole at the end of your tip see how i can still kind of pull that apart i just want to really make sure that that's closed well this is your seam if you're sewing it you don't have a problem it's already there pull it apart a little bit just to make sure that you you caught all your edges if you didn't I see right there I've got a little bit of a hole a little bit of glue right there push it down you caught that check the other side and it looks like it's all okay all right now you're going to take this inside out put your thumb all the way up to the top makes it a little easier to grab and then flip and push I get my thumb up there push push with that push it up however pointy you want that to be and now we have a cute little pair of bunny ears we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna stuff it <laughs> Claire's saying, yay, I did it right. You don't have to stuff these either. If you want really floppy ears, which is cute, just stuff a little bit of it. I think I'm gonna let one ear flop over. So I'm gonna just put stuffing up to that and I'm gonna let that point hang down. Take more of your fill, stuff your other. Ear. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just, I'm going to let these just kind of be loosey-goosey and not stuff. You want to only stuff part. You don't want to stuff this entire thing because remember, as I said, you want to flip it over. You want to put just a little bit of stuffing up at the top. I've probably got it stuffed to about there have enough where you can put it over. And I'm just stuffing this up because I want I want the ear to go. Now see how this is, I stuffed too much. I don't like how fat it made that ear. So I'm just gonna work some of that back out. I like the floppy. And then that makes me take some out. So there's that. You're gonna grab your gnome, and I did. I have his nose like way over here. So that happens. The nice thing about hot glue is if you work hard enough, I'm gonna cut it because I really don't like that. I'm gonna just cut that off because we're not gonna see the whole thing anyway. I wanna make sure that that's right in the middle and it didn't get in the middle for me. So because I cut that, I'm gonna be safe. I see that I cut a little bit of my string. I'm just gonna pull that back up, make sure that that's okay. And then I'm going to look at them going this way. I'm not even going to tear that off. I'm just going to put the glue on it and put it in the center. Ouch, where it belongs. Ooh, and like I said, you usually get third degree burns as you're doing <laughs> hot glue. <laughs> if you don't, you're not a real crafter. Okay. So now, now my nose is there and much, much better in the center. And yes, the glue went all the way underneath my fingernail, all the way on the hand. Yeah, it hurts. But you just peel it off. And you're good to go. You Someone have a, react you have a blister and, <laughs> and uh, it'll be a great remembrance for a week. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hat we're gonna kind of put it on. Remember the heel goes in the back. This is a little fussy. Put it down and around. So I can see, I've got it here. This is where the stuffing comes in for the back so it holds it up. You may need more. When you're gonna glue this, when you're gonna glue the hat on, I do want to have a little bit of a cuff. This is pink. I like that little bit of an edge. The insides of these socks aren't all that great, so I don't want to go up too far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue 
right here. Put your finger thing on. They put my finger thing on so I don't. <laughs> or use your, get your chopstick ready. Just get that about part way on. So you're gonna cover, basically cover half of the nose. You don't want the whole nose sticking up. You're gonna cover just kind of a little bit over the bridge of the nose. So now I know that's exactly where that's got to be. So you can see it's just glued by the tip. I know I want to put a little bit more stuffing in the back. It seemed a bit floppy there so I can get my heel to stick out a bit. Turn it back over. Now put a little bit more glue on the sides. Gluing my sock down on the nose because this is what's going to show so this is what you really want to look good so you want to take your time gluing it down putting it where it needs to be on the nose i fold it over that cuff so there you go you can see that that's on there i then want to kind of you're going to just smoosh everything in there pull it down and around and smoosh it. Whoop. I said a little bit fussy. Push it down. We're going to be gluing this so it's going to stay. Making sure all your pieces are up. They have to be up. This sock is a little littler, smaller than the one I used before. So it depends on the size of your sock, of how much you have to kind of push it around. This has given me a little bit of a trouble. But you just gotta kind of be a little, a little rough with it. Make sure your beard is away. You're going to glue right up at the top. You can see I put glue right there and I'm gluing it down around the nose because I don't want to be able to look up and see the tops of my mop or beard whatever you're using you want to glue that kind of down make it snug like he's cold he's pushed it up and around so I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue right down there pulling it down as I go pushing it in Keeping it pushed. <laughs> so then you can see the front part is pretty glued. Now we're going to put him down on his belly and we're going to glue it down. Pulling and pushing. Holding it down. I did the front first now I'm doing the very back then we'll do the sides because you just want to make sure your front and your back are glued so now you can see the front and the back are glued now on the sides it's not really fitting all that well I've got pieces sticking up that's when you start to get fussy that's when you pull it down push all the things up that have to be there lay your glue down it down hold it pushing it down so I'm hiding the arm seams this is hard to show you on camera you should really have to be like right there pushing in As you can see how that's all same thing on the other side I'm gonna do my line of glue I'm gonna push it down make sure it's all stuck on the sides now is the time that you can just kind of adjust the stuffing putting it where you need it and then I would want that part covered so I'm just going to put my glue there, pull it all the way down, 
not worrying about having a cuff in the back. I just want to I just want to glue that down. Just so I'm holding it so the back looks good. I did this really fast. When you're doing this, you want to do this a little slower than I did. Make sure there's enough stuffing up there. Um, this is where you just have to arrange it, push it, moosh it, push it down a bit. Like I said, with this one, kind of messed me up a bit because I took the nose off. He's a, It's sticking out a little bit. I probably should have put more polyfill there, but I can move, I can move that around. Take some up from the top, move it around, grab it, moosh them. In fact, I think I'm gonna take all that stuffing out of this one ear, push it down so it's more towards his face. And then I can flop that ear over. If you really wanted to keep a flopped ear, you could glue it. You could glue both sides. I kind of like it floppy. I think I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. You don't know sometimes until you have it on there of uh, what it's gonna look like. And again, if you were doing this, not cutting it, it would be sticking straight up, but that's the same way to get it on. Now you've got to decide what you want to do with your arms. If you want him, I, I had a, um, I'm making a wreath for Easter um, and I got these really cute eggs um, from the Dollar Tree. If I just wanted him to hold that. So I glued his hand to one end, glued it, took the other hand, brought it over, glued it. So he's gonna permanently be holding that egg. If you want to be able to put different things in your hands, take them and glue them like that. Put some glue here and just glue it like that. And then that way he could have different things. Could you, Claire, could you go into the living room for me and bring me the uh, chocolate chip cookie gnome that I have in the living room? What I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna permanently glue his hands together. So I'm going to put those together, making sure thumbs are up, squeezing, holding to make sure that it's going to stay, making sure all the glue has stayed. I know I got some fringe in there, but now I've got him holding his hands like that. So now I can take him and I can put whatever I want in there. I can put some live flowers. I can put a uh, blown out, if you have eggs, uh, you know, blow it out, make some scrambled eggs and then decorate the shell of your egg. Stick that in there. If you have any of the plastic eggs, you can put that in there. Flowers, a basket, whatever you want to have him hold. The rocks, you can see by, because I have the rocks in there, I can just move them around to get him to stand. This is a chocolate chip and a glass of milk. This is actually the top of um, a hairspray aerosol can um, that I used. So I filled that up and used that as his cup. This is, I'm a Starbucks fan. This is the holder so your, your hands don't burn. That's the cardboard. I flipped it inside out and I made a chocolate chip cookie. I glued that to that. This is yarn. The uh, socks were from the Dollar Tree. There were cookies, yarn, and this was a bag that I had. I don't know what it had. I think it had a, a dessert mix in uh, for Christmas. So I had that, stuck it on there, and just put a pipe clean around the top. So you can see how clever you can, you can um, make them. So this is it. This is all you have to do. I saw my uh, Riley wanted to make an appearance. I have a dog, Riley. She just uh, came running down the stairs. So for those of you that see her, that was Riley. So now you have your cute little bunny gnome. I hope you make some. I hope you um, had fun. If you have any questions and uh, you're going to the video after it's been put on the Southeast Steuben County Libraries site, um, 
I will answer questions there, and I know they also have a YouTube page. Uh, shout out to Marshall, who's going to be doing this. Thank you, Marshall. He said he's going to put it on for tomorrow, so there's that. Again, thank you to Erica um, for letting these types of projects uh, be here. I know, you, I know all the staff at the library is working extremely hard trying to do some fun stuff for us, even though we can't uh, be at the library. They're trying to help us out, so... Um, hopefully the very first video was okay. This was live crafting with uh, Kimberly. Hope you had a good time. Thank you very much. And I will have Claire push my finish. Bye.